I'm Mark Callahan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, and this is Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. With 375 gallons of water volume and 96 horizontal inches of swimming space, I had lots of options for livestock for my new 375 gallon tank. And just because I had lots of options, didn't mean that I wanted to go nutso when it came to stocking my tank. So in this episode of Mr. Saltwater Tank TV, I'm gonna walk you through my fish and coral selections on my new tank. And I'll keep in mind as you're watching this show, any fish that you see in this tank was quarantined for a minimum of 30 days. I don't fudge on this one anymore. Without fail, any fish that comes into my system gets quarantined for 30 days. I highly recommend it. If you're not quarantining, you're doing yourself, your tank, and your livestock a disservice. That being said, let's jump in and have a look at my fin friends in my new tank. I love tanks, and arguably these fish get overstocked more than others, so I was particularly picky with my tank selection. Now I already had my blonde naso tang on hand, as well as my purple tang. I was wanting to add a splash of color, and thinking back to my diving trips in Hawaii, three yellow tangs fit the bill. Once the tangs completed their mandatory 30 days of quarantine, I introduced them at the same time as the purple tang to avoid aggression issues. Still wanting a little more yellow in the tank, I decided to surprise my son with a yellow-bellied hippo tang that of course he calls Dory. This fish is easily doubled in size and is doing great. Now I still have my large spot breast angelfish and she provides a splash of yellow and great eye candy as her streamers are starting to come in. Now regrettably, my female bellus angelfish became aggressive towards my two smaller spot breast angelfish. This aggression is certainly an oddity as bellus angelfish are usually very friendly and they're known for ignoring other angelfish. As with any fish, it's behavior specific to that animal. In my case, I happen to get an aggressive Bellus angelfish. Something you might have noticed thus far is some algae hanging around my tank. Now I've written a book on algae control. Why would I have algae in my tank? Well, where there's light and there's nutrients, algae is gonna show up. In my case, I've got plenty of light over the tank and I'm keeping my nutrients artificially high. Now why would I do that? Well, I'm running bio pellets on the tank to grow bacteria. Now without nutrients, bacteria isn't gonna grow. I see a lot of people make this mistake. They have low nutrient tanks or no nutrients at all, and they put bio pellets on their tank and then go, well, not much happened or nothing happened at all. Well, no kidding. Bacteria doesn't have the nutrients that it needs to grow. It's not going to grow. So in my case, I'm keeping my nutrient levels artificially high to help get that bacteria going. As it gets going, those bio pellets get fully kicked in, nutrient level is gonna come down, and this algae is gonna go away. For now, it's kind of like a long lost friend. Nice to see you, but you can be moving on now. Moving on to the wrasses in my tank, I still have my leopard wrasse, which is one of my favorite fish of all time. Now I expanded on my wrasse collection by getting four red velvet fairy wrasses, one male and three females. These fish are voracious eaters and I love watching them cruise around the tank. Now, word of caution on these fish, they jump a lot. Easily once a day, I hear one of them jump. So if you're considering these fish, make sure you have a canopy or a covering on the top of your tank. My common cleaner ass is doing great, and something I've noticed about him is that he cleans fish more in the late evening before everyone goes to bed. It's almost like he's there to brush everyone's teeth and put them to bed. A fish that doesn't get a lot of attention in the hobby but is very cool is the zebra bar dart fish. Now I have a pair of them and they are really cool as they swim right near the top of the water and they have some really neat markings. These fish are also big jumpers, so make sure you have a canopy or a tight fitting lid if you want to attempt to keep these fish. My pair of purple firefish look similar to the zebra bar dartfish, but the firefish hang out in the mid-level of my tank and they completely ignore each other. They've set up camp on opposite ends of the tank. Speaking of ignoring each other, my pair of captive bred Bengai cardinal fish also seem to have gotten divorced as they spend their time on opposite ends of the tank. Hey, not all relationships work out. Dropping down to the sand bed, I picked up a captive bred mandarin that gulps down frozen brine shrimp. Despite my tank size, I'll still only buy a mandarin that eats frozen food. I know these fish are pretty, but please don't attempt a mandarin unless it is eating frozen food and you actually observe it eating frozen food. Also on the sand bed is a captive bred blue watchman goby from Pro Aquatics. He's also joined by a pink spot goby that I had in my 235 gallon tank. I love this pink spot goby. He'll sift sand occasionally, but not too much to cause sandstorms or rock falls. Now, also in the goby family, 
I've got a blue line cleaner Kobe in there, well, somewhere. He's really small, and I really only see him when he comes out for a bite to eat. Closely related to the Gobies is the Blennies, and I have a bicolor Blenny thanks to inspiration from Francis the Fish Geek. I've also got a Midas Blenny that is my son's favorite fish. He calls them the Orange Fishy. For the fish on the fringe in this tank, I have my male blue throat trigger fish, and he continues to be a model citizen. Totally ignores snails, totally ignores crabs, and he even leaves alone the two cleaner shrimp that I have in the tank. Now, if you follow me long enough, you know that I started this tank with a male blue throat trigger and a female blue throat trigger. And unfortunately, the female blue throat trigger fish has passed on. She was still eating well. Unfortunately, her abdomen became sunken. She didn't respond to medication, so I believe that she passed away due to internal parasites. Now, I'm gonna be sending her off for autopsy to try to get a professional opinion on exactly what she succumbed to. For now, the male is doing well, he's happy, he's healthy, and he continues to be a model citizen. I'm happy to have him in my tank. Fantastic fish to look at, very unique swimmer, and lots of personality. I've still got my pair of Chromas, including the larger one that is at least six years old. Of course, I can't forget about my four blacker ice clownfish from Pro Aquatics. I love the crazy markings on these guys and gals, and they all jump into the anemones in my tank, and two of them have even paired off. Maybe I'll be expecting kids soon. Rounding out my fish selection is my three resplendent anthias and three bartlett anthias. Now, even though my friend Derek calls a bartlett anthias the underbite fish, I still think they're cool and they're really pretty. There's a look at my fish selection for the tank. Let's move on to everyone's favorite topic, coral. Now the first thing you're gonna notice is that my tank isn't stuffed with coral. Why not? Well, I've been a reef enthusiast all spring. Now if you don't know what a reef enthusiast is, Go to my website, mrsaltwatertank.com, download my free tank personality report, and you'll get in the loop about what I'm talking about. So I've been a reef enthusiast all spring. I haven't been focused on what kind of coral is gonna be in my tank. I've been doing other things. Now that summer is here, I'm off the road, working from home a lot more. I'm actually looking at my tank for once, which is nice, and getting very interested in what coral am I gonna put in this tank. That being said, here's what I've chosen so far. First thing to notice, I haven't gotten a lot of SPS coral just yet. I have two small pieces and that's it. Why the lack of SPS? Until those nutrient levels come down that I talked about earlier, SPS is just not gonna be happy in my tank. For now though, it's fun to watch the two pieces that I have do well and feel lucky that I'm bucking the trend and having finicky corals do well in a dirty tank. Since I'm not focused on SPS, that has left me to start my new zoa garden. I picked up some bread and butter zoas like Eagle Eyes, King Midas, and Tubbs Blues, and I started a hornet garden of red and yellow zoas. The zoa garden's got a long way to go, and I gotta remind myself that every garden started with just a few plants. I mean, that's great and all, but hurry up already. I wanna frag you. Speaking of frags, my four polyp blasto colony is easily quintupled in size, up to 20 polyps at least, and for the record, I don't feed it anything. I do feed my Aviopora and my Ganeopora corals though. I love these corals and I look forward to the challenge of keeping the Ganeopora alive and growing. Speaking of alive and growing, my neon green toadstool leather is doing just that. This piece keeps doubling in size and it looks great. Sadly, after eight months of kicking butt and taking names, my large pink tipped elegance coral took a turn for the worse. I'm not sure why and after trying to recover it, it finally passed on. Very sad, and I'm sure gonna miss that piece. Elsewhere in LPS land, I've got a couple of brain corals that I love and are doing great. Not much to keeping those alive. Of course, I can't forget about my Aussie gold torch, especially when the dang clownfish mistakes it for an anemone. Right below the torch coral is my mini colony of Duncans that continue to multiply and of course look great. Rounding out my coral selection is a couple of aquacultured Gorgonians. I love watching these guys sway in the current in my tank, and since they are photosynthetic, they are growing well in my tank with minimal inputs from me. I can't forget about the other invertebrate life in my tank, such as my red bell pincushion urchin. It's gorgeous, and of course I have my rose bubble tip anemone as well. I also picked up a sunburst anemone. Now it came in very stressed from the shipping, but I'm recovering it. I'm happy to say that it, now it is starting to grow in size. My fish selection is complete, and as you've seen, my coral selection is just getting started. Now, I will say, looking at my 
375 gallon tank and remembering my fully stocked and grown out 90 gallon tank, well, looking at this tank sometimes can be a little hard to swallow because I think, man, I want all those corals to be grown out and everything to be thick. However, I gotta remind myself, fully stocked and fully grown out tank takes time, so I gotta keep my expectations in check. So for now, back to coral hunting. <laughs> I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank. This has been Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. Till next time, have a good one, enjoy your tanks, and know your tank personality.